If you're trying to lose weight, then you need to hear about stevia, which is a great alternative to sugar. It's zero calories, it doesn't cause tooth decay, and you've all probably already tried it in some of your drinks. One teaspoon of stevia is just as sweet as one cup of sugar, but it may not be great if you have kidney stones. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why stevia is bad for kidney stones. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Robert Chan, a urologist practicing in California. On this channel, I help guys and girls learn how to manage their kidney stones so that they don't get them again in the future. When I was a kid, I loved sugar. You could give me a bag of Skittles and I would eat the whole thing in a day. Now, I'm not proud to admit it, but one year in high school, I actually had ended up having about 10 cavities. Now that I'm an adult, I still love sugar, but I know better and try to get some healthier alternatives. That's why stevia is a great alternative to just consuming large amounts of sugar. For people who don't know what stevia is, this is a natural sweetener and alternative to sugar. Importantly, it has no calories. Stevia comes from the leaves of the plant species Stevia rubadiana, native to Brazil and Paraguay. It's 30 to 150 times sweeter than sugar is. And you can find it in certain products like Coca-Cola Life, Sprite Green, and Bi Fives. So why is stevia so bad for kidney stones? Going to this website, kidneystonediet.com, you can find out the, the different oxalate compositions of all sorts of foods. So if we type in stevia, you find that one teaspoon of this stuff has about 42 milligrams of oxalates. So what are oxalates? These are some plant-derived compounds that bind minerals. For those with kidney stones, they bind calcium to form calcium oxalate stones, which is like the most common type of kidney stones that people can get. People who suffer from kidney stones should really try to limit the amount of oxalates that they consume to less than 100 milligrams per day. So 42 milligrams in one teaspoon of stevia seems like a lot. It's almost half of your amount for the day. Maybe you're trying to lose weight or get healthier or get your diabetes under better control by not eating sugar. What are some of the alternatives then to stevia if you've got kidney stones? There's two main ones, aspartame and sucralose. Let's talk about aspartame a little bit because it's been around the longest. This is also known as NutraSweet here in the States. You can find it in a lot of compounds and drinks. Diet Coke uses it, Coke Zero uses it. It has very chemically taste to it. There have been some rat studies that show that if you consume a massive amount of this stuff, that it has been associated with developing certain types of cancers. Now, this stuff is FDA approved, so it's safe for human consumption. And it's in almost 6,000 food and beverage products. So it's safe. The amount that a human can eat before it starts becoming unsafe is you'd have to consume almost more than 28 cans of diet soda per day to get out of that safe range, which it seems pretty near impossible. Now the second alternative to sugar and to stevia is sucralose, which is a little bit newer. This is known as Splenda. It's made from taking the sugar molecule and then just chemically changing it up a little bit so that while it may taste the same or give this idea of sweetness, to the brain, it doesn't have any calories to it. It's already in a lot of foods. In fact, I used this stuff this morning when I was doing some water enhancing drops in my water. The downside or negative to this stuff is that it actually has been shown in some studies that it doesn't have as much weight loss advantage as you would expect. In one study, they gave a bunch of kids sugar and another group a bunch of sucralose. And they only found that the kids who got sugar gain like an additional extra pound on average compared to the ones that got sucralose or Splenda. It should have been a much more considering that this stuff is zero calories. There's been some association with bowel issues and also with insulin regulation as well. Now these two alternatives, aspartame and sucralose, they don't seem great. So what's a person to do? If I had to choose, I would probably pick Stevia still. And here's the reason why. It's the most natural one of all three of these sugar alternatives. And then talking about the actual oxalate composition. Well, let's go back. One teaspoon of this stuff is comparable to sweetness of one cup of sugar. Now there's no way that I would consume like one cup of sugar per day. And so the actual amount of stevia that you're gonna use in your food is gonna be a mere fraction 
of the one teaspoon. So the 42 milligrams of oxalates, while it may seem like a lot, is actually gonna be a lot smaller fraction of that. If you're looking for some more education about how to modify your diet or ways to prevent getting more kidney stones in the future, check out some of my other videos. There's one on the five worst foods to eat for calcium oxalate stones and is beer or coffee good for kidney stones? Well, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great stone-free day. Bye.